Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel Inspiration Tools dot com. Today we have came with interesting topic that is how to make PLC panel for industrial machines. So let us begin. So today I am going to show you how in the industries the PLC panels are made for different specific machines. So first of all we need to understand the user requirement or what is the requirement of machines. So here we have taken one machine. So actually this is called broaching machine and it is used in gear manufacturing companies. So first of all we will see its auto operation. So this is how the machine works in auto mode. This was the top slide and this is the bottom slide. It moves till the downwards. You can see downward positions are achieved. Now it is moving upward. So up indication will come and then it is moving upwards. So this is the complete automatic operation of this machine. So what this machine does, here there is one cutter and it takes the cutter down. Here the part is placed and this bottom slide again takes the cutter downward and the shapes is given in this part and this is complete hydraulic machine. So let us see how to make PLC panel for this machine. So first of all, we need to understand what are the inputs and outputs required for this machine. So let us first discuss about the outputs. As this is the hydraulic machine, so obviously we will require one hydraulic motor. So one output is the hydraulic motor. Besides that, when we are cutting any metal object, we require coolant. So our next output is coolant motor. Okay. So these are the main two outputs. Now to move these different slides up and down, what we require? We require solenoid valves. So here two solenoid valves for up down movement of this green slide. Okay. And two solenoid valves for up down movement of this orange slide okay so total four solenoid valve plus there is one common solenoid valve for all these operations so total we have five solenoid valves so again summing up we have two motors and five solenoid valves besides that we have control on indication tower light indications so total right now we have 11 outputs so these things is necessary for selecting the PLC. Okay. So now we have discussed all the necessary outputs required for this machine. Similarly, we have to count the necessary inputs required for this machine. So as you can see, two limit switch over here. These two limit switch are for up and down position of this green slide. Okay. Similarly. There will be another two limit switch which can't be shown over here but that two limit switches are for this orange slides up and down position. So total we have four limit switch. Besides that we have buttons from control panel that you can see from here. Here is the control panel. So in the control panel uh, what we have we have control on push button. After that, there will be auto manual selector switch for auto mode and manual mode. Now let us discuss about the manual mode. So in the manual mode, uh, suppose if the machine uh, stops during any operation, so next time we have to take the home position. So for taking the home position, we have to use manual mode. So this is the auto manual selector switch. By this, what are the manual functions over here? First, up down movement of this green slide. So, two push buttons for up and down movement of this slide, and two push buttons that you can see from here are for this orange slide's up down movement. And uh, this black button is for coolant motor, okay, in manual mode. In auto mode, the coolant will automatically start and stop, and one emergency switch. Besides this, you 
can see there is two hand operation for this machine. So here we have used four push buttons. Why four push buttons? Because you can see there is two cycle. First cycle is cutter coming downwards. So in the downwards, both this slide goes downwards. So two push buttons for that. And next time, both slide moves upward. So two push buttons for that. So another push button is not shown over here. But there are four push buttons over here. So in this way, uh, we will have total uh, four limit switches. Actually, uh, the article I have mentioned that is for different machine. So the thing I am going to show you that is for different machine, but that machine is still not prepared. So just to show you how the actual machine looks like, this is the different machine. So it has uh, minor changes. That is, it has 16 inputs, but the panel I am going to make has has. 12 inputs because this machine is yet to be made so its video can be made right now so this video is for your idea that uh, how you can visit the actual machine and from that you can visualize your requirements and the functions okay so this is just for explanation purpose so now the panel which we are going to make uh, has same number of outputs but inputs are 12. So from inputs and outputs we are going to select our equipments. So for example here I am going to use Delta 14 SS2 PLC which has 8 inputs and 5 outputs but as you see I have 12 inputs so I have to use another extra module. So when I use another extra module that is digital module 16 SP so in that I will get 8 extra inputs and 8 extra outputs. So now I have total 5 plus 8, 13 outputs. So okay, uh, my requirement is 12 output and that is fulfilled in the one module. So in this way I am going to select my PLC. After selecting PLC, uh, we have similarly we have to select other components like SMPS, MPCB, contactors and after selecting the sizing we have to select the layout on the this plane panel and based on the layout what we do we fit the cable trace. So first I have put all the components on this plate and decided the layout and then I made a drawing of cable tray layout. So based on that I decided that this layout and we fitted the cable tray for cable routing. So what was my layout? Here there will be PLC, control MCBs and SMPS. After that here we will keep relay channel board. Here there will be MPCB and contactor and finally here all the TBs that is connectors okay that will be going to field. So first step is to decide your layout and based on layout you have to fit your cable trace. After fitting the cable trace similarly we will mount DIN rail channel for mounting our equipments. Uh, right now the image is uh, upside down so actually this is for terminal connections that is the bottom part of the panel. So just the idea is to mount the DIN rails. After this what we will do we will mount all our decided equipments on the DIN rail. First I will put this then this and this all. Now the important thing is how to select the size of equipment and how I kept all this. So first of all, as we discussed, the input and outputs of PLCs. So I hope this thing is clear to you. After that, what we are going, we don't connect our outputs directly to the PLC. We connect it through relay boards. Okay. So right now we have 12 outputs. 
So if I use one eight channel relay board, still I require four. So I can use another four channel relay board, but keeping the future outputs in mind, I have used another eight chile eight channel relay board. So in this way, I have selected these two relay boards. After that, there comes this MCB. So this first MCB is for the input of transformer. From the transformer output will come that will come to this MCB and this MCB will be the input of SMPS. So generally we use only one control MCB but here for user requirement we have used two MCBs for control. So this is the primary side of transformer and this is for the secondary side of transformer from here it will supply to the SMPS. Now from the SMPS 24 volt comes out so zero volt is provided directly to individual places and 24 volt is coming to this single MCB for the protection of PLC. So from here we will give 24 volt supply to PLC and all other field equipments. Now uh, which are the places where the 24 volt be used. So first of all to power up the PLC besides that it will go to all the inputs so it will come to this TV okay and from here it will go to all the inputs from the inputs again the power will come to this TV and from this TV the input will be given to this PLC and in the similar way for output the 24 volt supply will go to the common of this output and 0 volt directly given to relay board if the output is turned on so that 24 volt supply from common to particularly output go to energize this relay and in that way the relays will be on and similarly the contactor here we have used 24 volt coil contactor so this 24 volt through PLC also energize these contactors. Besides this, we can also take the MPCB inputs to our PLC by giving 24 volt supply to its one terminal and from its another terminal. Uh, as you guys know, there is NONC auxiliary contacts in MPCB also. So from that also we can take the feedback. If the MPCB is stripped, it will give in feedback to PLC and we can stop the machine. Now. Uh, let's talk about the SMPS. So, SMPS size here we have decided the 5 ampere. Uh, that is the minimum size. If you have more inputs and outputs, then we have to calculate the all loads ampere like relay, contactor, and if you have another outputs like magnetic clamping or magnetic motor, anything like that, 24 volt magnetic coil or the field coils that are solenoid valves we have to count all the current of that and based on that we have to select our SMPS. So this was about the sizing and last sizing of this TVs. So generally uh, for control these are the 2.5 square mm TVs and uh, for main input we have used 6 square mm connectors and for motor we have used 4 square mm connectors and I forget to tell you uh, this one MCB is for control panels light and fan okay and these are the phi connector with fuse so these connectors we use for solenoid valves generally we give fuse protection for our field solenoid valves like this so this is all about the selection and sizing of the component. Now the next step is the wiring all of this. So here you can see we have wired. So first of all while doing the wiring for control wiring we use 0.5 or 0.75 square mm cables and with the wiring what we do we apply ferrules with the marking and lugs to it so that it can be properly clamped to these terminals and for clamping we require lugs 
and for lugging we require lugs of proper size and also crimping tool so what is the process first you have to strip the wire insert the lug after that insert the lug in this hole and by pressing the crimping tool you can crimp the lug like this so there are different lugs available like pin type fork type ring type so generally in the panels we use pin type lugs after this uh, you can see we have used different color coding for input and output here yellow cable are for inputs and this is the blue cable for common of this plc so that is the zero volt now 24 volt will go in field you can see these are the these connectors are linked and 24 volt supply is given to here so from here 24 volt supply will go to field from that limit switch will on so it will give 24 volt supply back to here so these are for inputs and this all are for output so it will give 24 volt supply to here this yellow wires and again this yellow wires will give 24 volt to x0 x1 like that and plc will get the input similarly here you can see in the common of outputs we have connected ground wire so that means in common we have 24 volt and if y0 or y1 is on then through this white cables here you can see relays are connected so if y0 is on this white cable will have power and here another we have 0 volt now you can see i have given 0 volt to only this connector so here there are the links by using this links you can give 0 volt to another relays so in this way the wiring of relays are done so if y0 will be on 24 will go to this white cable from white cable to this y0 here and this relay will be on and through this relay we will turn on the outputs like solenoid valves contactors or indicating lights and what is the wiring of uh, motor or starter over here first of all the main supply will come to here from this main supply we will give power to this from here we will take the link okay so here link is taken from here Besides this, we will give a single phase power to one control MCB. Now, RYB is given to this MPCB. After that, this RYB goes to this contactor. And when this contactor is energized by PLC, power will flow through this wires and it will go to connectors. And from here, the motor will be on. So, this is all about the complete wiring of this panel so now we will take this onto the field mount it and do the field wiring of this and then we will do the programming and uh, test it if there is any correction required so this was all about how in industries for, for specific machine you can make plc panels if you want to get detailed information about this project you can also read our article the link is provided below thank you for watching this if you want to learn more content like this show your interest by liking and subscribing our youtube channel